What I wanted to ask you about is Alice's friendship with Avis that we saw starting to yeah. develop in, I guess it was around episodes f- four or five, maybe around in there. Um, I thought it was great that while Julia and company were off in San Francisco and Brittany was feeling a little down about it, but still working on her goal, her connection with Avis to me was interesting because I think it was something that Avis needed, but also there was a scene, I guess, was it when they were shopping for food Mm -hmm. and how the um, server was ignoring Alice and Avis kind of sweeps in and she obviously helped and I don't think she meant any harm, but it was interesting harm. It was interesting to me that she didn't sort of acknowledge the racism, but I don't know that she knew. And I don't think that she, um, I think it was a moment. I just think that their connection and their friendship, even though it wasn't about race, I still think that they both learned some things. So I want to talk to you about that relationship and what you think the um, creators were doing in forming that and letting it roll out in the way that it did. Yeah, I love those scenes, uh, partially because I love playing with B.B. Newworth, who doesn't. Like <laughs> We just had so much fun together shooting those but I, the, I I love them for two different reasons. First, the first time you really see them together is when they're having dinner at the restaurant and you find out that Alice went to school and she studied in France and she had all of these all of these uh, these these things that were pretty amazing at the time in general, but that people just ditched, everyone discounted her, including somebody like Avis, who actually does respect Julia, but still doesn't think of her as somebody who would have had all of those experiences. And yet there's this part of Avis and that's and who she was as a real person from at least Bibi's account, that she was a fairly liberal person. And the she was someone who was willing to maybe just shift her viewpoint slightly in that regard. But at the same time, there are still microaggressions that happen when people aren't, aren't aware of, what, of the things that they're saying or doing. And Chris and I talked about that and Daniel Goldfarb, the writer, with the scenes where they're going and shopping at Savinor's and she get, gets ignored or she tries to, you know, Alice tries to make a stand with Avis and say, listen, you're a volunteer. You've got to be here or, you, or you're not anymore. And Chris said, you know, I want to show that Alice isn't always being respected and isn't taken seriously, but you don't have to be didactic about it. Like, how can we do it in a way that is truthful? It's not going to be sitting and having, no offense to Aaron Sorkin at all. I love Aaron Sorkin, but sitting and having like a a three-page diatribe about it, because that's not really actually what what happens in day-to-day life. It might be a look or a glance or a, you know, a small thing here and there. And then, you know, you hope people go home and, and think about that moment and come back changed in the next interaction you have with someone. It just seemed a little more truthful. And I think that's what they wanted to explore is like really what would have happened in the 1960s, not what we would hope would happen. You know, not like, you know, this big monologue from this black character saying this is what it is to be black, but really what would have happened. And I really appreciated the honesty of that and not trying to be too 21st century about it and, and have this, you know, great like boss lady moment. I've had a recurring thought that I'd like to propose to you. An educational cooking show hosted by myself. Feels flimsy to me. This is public television for God's sake. Shouldn't we go with someone with a more camera friendly look and a less distinctive sound? You were onto something so big. I'm just sorry that my colleagues don't have the vision to see it yet. So obviously food, uh, love is displayed through food in this series and from the book. So what I'd like to know from you is what recipe would you recommend for someone to cook for someone that they love that you saw or that you observed? Oh, I mean, there's something, <laughs> I don't know if this is gonna sound so weird, but there's something really sexy about the Coco Van recipe. I don't know what it is. It's just like the smell of it and it's the wine and the chicken. It's this like, it's a very sensual meal actually. So I feel like that uh, with some some nice uh, candles, you know, maybe you can just, I love Palo Santos. So maybe just put that in the air, let it just percolate some like low, low dimmed light would be great. An amazing wine. Thank you. Yes.